Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Got a letter today from a viewer about tractor engines and what's the best tractor engine? Well, I'm going to tell you my opinion. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories about one engine that lasted almost no time and another engine that lasted forever. And then I'm going to ask your opinion in the comments. First off, let's get to our letter. And the letter comes from Ed. And Ed says, Mike, thanks for putting your industry knowledge to us in a well-presented way. Well, thank you, Ed. My question is, which engine in the 18 to 35 horsepower range is the most reliable and strongest? Well, Ed, let me tell you first today a couple of stories about engines I was around that uh, one that didn't last very long and one that lasted forever. When I was with Agco Corporation, they offered an Agco Alice tractor. It was a, a tractor that was actually made by a company called SLH, or Sami Lamborghini Hurleyman, in Italy. And they had an air and oil-cooled diesel engine. And the air, of course, cooled the outside of the engine, and the oil, they had a big oil cooler that kept the oil really cool, and they had a mechanism at the bottom of the barrels of the cylinders to pump the cool oil up into the cylinders to keep them cool. And they had a model called a 4650. It was like, I want to say, 50 horse in that range. And uh, that tractor was bulletproof. I mean, we sold them to a lot of people that just beat the tar out of them. And they just kept running and kept running. We sold one, though, to a guy that got it home and took really good care of it. And the tractor was slobbering oil out of the muffler. And we had our service guys out, the dealer sent service guys out, and then the factory service guy came out. Try to figure out why is that engine pumping oil, it just slobber oil right out of the muffler when you ran it. Well, they finally decided there's something wrong with the rings, and so they replaced the engine at the company's expense. Took it back to him, engine slobbered oil again. So they brought it back and put it on the dyno to make sure the rings had seated. A diesel engine needs to get a little bit of work when it's new to get everything seated and in place. And they ran that thing on the dyno wide open under full load for a couple of hours and it was still slobbering oil out. Well, finally one of our service reps got the bright idea that maybe the problem wasn't the engine, it was the muffler. Those things had a straight up and down muffler took the old muffler out, found out it was caked with oil on the inside, put a new muffler on. We never heard from the customer again. The problem was with the original engine. The, the rings never seated on it because the, the customer had taken it real easy with it. The rings had not seated, and so it was spewing oil past the rings into the muffler, and that went on long enough that the muffler caked up with the oil, eventually put the new engine on, got it to seat the rings on the dyno, but then the muffler caused the slobbering of the oil. But that, that first engine didn't last very long, but it, it pointed out to me very early in my career how important it is when you get a diesel engine, at least that era of diesel engines, to put them under load, work them a little bit, and get them broken in and get those rings seated. Well, now let me tell you about this little guy. This is a New Holland TC-18. And when I left Agco to start managing a dealership, this tractor was brought into our new Holland dealership for an engine rebuild. In the background of this tractor, they used it on a little mini golf course in Branson, Missouri. And Branson, Missouri is a tourist area, and this little mini golf course, you checked in where you paid your money, and then there was a, quite a ways to go to get to the first tee. And they had a, this tractor with a box over it to make it look like a choo-choo train and a little trailer behind it to cart people up to the first green. And they would run it from March through November, whenever it turned cold, seven days a week, 14, 15 hours a day, every year, day in, day out. And they brought it into the dealership that I managed for an engine rebuild with 11,000 hours on it. And they had never touched the engine it had been running all those years. Now, they took really good care of it, but they had never taken apart the engine. So a very well-built engine, and this engine was built by Shabaro, will last an extreme long time with proper care. But I think right now there's a lot of companies offering excellent engines in the compact tractor world. And Ed, to answer your question, I don't think 
I'm going to live long enough if I bought a new tractor to see a major engine failure of any kind. If you buy a tractor today, you're going to get a tractor with extremely tight tolerances. And that's because tier four and emission requirements require that all of the fuel gets burned uh, in the combustion chamber. So the tolerances on everybody's engines to meet tier four requirements are so tight that, that you're getting an engine that has some pretty extreme engineering in it from the factory. And you know, most of us that have what we call weekend farmers or hobby farmers like I am, like a lot of my audience, we don't put that many hours on a tractor in a year. We might put 100 or 200 hours on it just brush hogging our fields and moving brush around and doing stuff like that. So in the lifetime of the tractor, we're not going to probably put over two or 3,000 hours on an engine. And I think any of the engines out there today will last that long. And most of the engines today are built where they give good power, good fuel economy. They start easy, even in the dead of the winter, and they'll have good longevity, I think. But right now, it's the problem with most of us and trying to find the best engine from 18 to 38 horsepower or whatever range you want in the small tractor in is we're not going to put enough hours on these tractors to get a good idea of longevity for decades. So I'm going to tell you my personal opinion is that you don't even need, Ed, to worry about your engine in your tractor. I think any of the engines out there today are going to last as long as you own the tractor. That's the least of your worries that you have an engine failure. Now, am I wrong on that? If you want to disagree with me, that's fine if you've had a, an issue with an engine. Now, like I said, with the uh, story about the 4650 Agco Alice early, that, that tractor was a good tractor. Those engines were stout, but we had one that was off from the factory. And if we'd brought it in and run it on the dyno before we delivered it, we may not have had any problem with it. But that one gave us fits. But I think today, most of the engines are excellent, and I think they'll last as long as you own the tractor. Now, if you've had problems with an engine, let me know what they are in the comments below. But uh, everybody can, can put out a lemon. It happens. I've heard from people, horror stories from my viewers, people that have had engines fail with low hours on a tractor. But it is pretty rare. The key to making money producing engines is to build as many engines as you can. The money is not in making engines unless you can get a bunch of them out. The money is putting an engine in uh, something that you use it for, like a truck or a tractor or a bulldozer or a skittle or whatever and, and get as many of those engines out there as you can. And, uh, and so the engine manufacturers are trying to make as many as they possibly can because of labor situation. They're trying to get as much of the manufacturing done with robots as they can. And to me, that tells me that the engines we've got today are as good as any that have ever been built, uh, both in performance and longevity. But if you disagree with me, put it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.